Hey guys, welcome back to One Low Week on my channel. This week I'm gonna be doing a series of short-term videos talking about the Apple TV Plus show, One Low. Every day I'm gonna post an episode review, and at the end of the week I'm gonna do a full series review with an analysis on source material, design, and themes. Today we're talking about season one, episode three, Bargain. Thanks so much for watching and I hope you enjoy. So let's start with a synopsis of episode three. Determined to find other humans, Eva enlists Rovinder's help, but getting her first real lead comes at a high price. So to start off, the first major thing that happens in this episode is that Eva finds a baby sand sniper trapped in one of Bastille's traps. I love, love the creature design of this. In the book, they look like big praying mantises, and in this series, they look a little more colorful and fantastic, a little bit kind of fairy tale looking creatures, alien fairy tale very well designed. And if you read the book, you know that sand snipers become a big, big plot point. So are we gonna see this one later? Who knows? I love this scene with the baby sand sniper because it's the first real glimpse we get at Eva's compassion and drive to help other living beings. She, in the book, is so compassionate and she feels so much. She's basically vegan because they don't eat meat in the sanctuary. She doesn't like the idea of killing animals even for food. She values life, even non-human life, so much. And that's a big, big character point for her. So we skip forward a little bit. We get to Lachis and we visit Karunkel's junk shop. Now Karunkel is a bad egg. We know that from the series. But his junk shop was so fun. I love the post-apocalyptic, Planet of the Apes, Fallout, Time Machine kind of, oh, this is a item that is probably used for this. And it's like a traffic cone used to hat. I think that's so funny. I love that bit. in any kind of far future media. Karunkel's character design was very book accurate, but also very stylized to the Skydance kind of animation, which I really liked. There was a pretty good medium of the two styles mixed together to make a really cool character. Skipping forward, um, the spider fish race was not from the book at all, but it was very fun. I think a kid would really like that, would like that scene. It's really interesting and fun. It kind of reminded me of Ice Age for some reason. I don't know why, but it also showed another important part of Eva's character, which is how brave and rebellious she is. She does not really like to conform to standard. As much as she does do it, she doesn't necessarily like it. And betting mother, knowing that she was going to win, but not like knowing, she just kind of hoped. I think that was so interesting and really showed how rebellious and risky she is. Moving on to Lachis and the Halcyonist people, both designs were fabulous. I loved the design of Lachis. I love that it looked like Lake Concourse was running through the village and bringing life to all the flora. Um, the Halcyonists were beautiful. They were not necessarily book accurate. They were, they had a pretty vague silhouette of Halcyonists from the book, but they were so beautiful. I love the design and they were all really welcoming and friendly, which is a character trait that they had in the series. One thread that I love throughout the series, the trilogy of books, is when people refer to Eva as Rovinder's daughter, it really feeds into a chosen found family narrative that is a huge, huge theme in this series and in the book series. And I just love when people refer to her as, oh, you, that's your daughter or that is your father. I love that in the series and I'm glad that they brought it into the TV show as well. One thing that really, really shocked me, and if you saw my trailer review, you'd know that I thought one thing and I was wrong. They mentioned the Arcean Sage who lives in Lachis, and they call her Darius. Now in the book, Arius lives in Lachis, who is Darius's sister, and Zin and Lorak are both of their brothers. There's four Arceans, and Arius lives in Lachis and Darius lives somewhere else that is not mentioned. That comes up in the next episode, which we will talk about, but it really threw me for a loop. I was like, Darius, wait a minute, it's supposed to be Arius, that's really strange. And we end the episode on Eva climbing up to see Darius in the score, once again, Joy Nya, amazing, amazing composer. I would love to look at more of her work in other shows because her work on this show is fantastic. So with Eva climbing up to see Darius, we end the episode three, Bargain. I will see you guys next time when we talk about episode four, Ghosts, which is my favorite episode of the series. So I will see you then. Peace, y'all.